Shotgun infantry, 2011, fighting Diamondbacks. We all fought brave, and by the grace, some of us managed to live through that. I came to this forum to send out a warning of how your future may unfold. Think it's all a hoax Well at least you can say That you haven't been told A long time ago, way back in history, all there was to drink was nothing but cups of tea. And along came a man by the name of Charlie Pops. He invented a wonderful drink and he made it out of Pops. Hey, he got to be an admiral and sultan or a king. And to his praises we shall always sing. Look at what he's done for us, he's filled us up with cheer. Lord bless Charlie Pops, a man who invented beer, 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 tiddly beer, beer, beer. In his free, the old Jay Clyde in Blackwell's pub as well. One thing you can be sure of is Charlie's beer they sell. So drink up all of me lucky lads when 11 o'clock we stop. For five short seconds to remember Charlie Mops. Why not? One, two, three, four, five. <clears throat> hey, you ought to be an admiral, a sultan, or a king. And to his praises we shall always sing. Look at what he's done for us, he's filled us up with cheer. Lord bless Charlie Mops, the man who invented beer, 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 tiddly beer, beer, beer. A barrel of malt, a bushel of hops, start around with a stick. The type of lubrication to make the engine stick. A forty pints of wallop a day will keep away the quacks. So I it's only a a penny a pint and one in six in tax. One, two. Three, four, five, hey! He ought to be an admiral, a sultan, or a king. And 
to his praises we shall always sing. <laughs> Look at what she's done for us, she's filled us up with cheer. Cheers! Lord bless Charlie Mops, the man who invented beer, 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 tiddly beer, beer, beer. The Lord bless Charlie Mops! <laughs> oh, that's rich, lad! <laughs> Oh boy, it's me, it's a night, it is the end of the week for most of us working stiffs, unless they call me tomorrow, uh, then I'm going to tell them to fuck off. But you know me, text the Black Pants Legion, I'm presuming you didn't stumble across me on accident. Uh, yeah, I know who John Teeter was, uh, or at least that whole group, I mean, I was observing it from the outside, but that's old, old, old school internet lore, and, uh, yeah, that was something that was hotly debated in that whole parasocial, uh, sort of s psycho studies of the early internet, where all the kooks and crazies came together to put things together and say, ah, what if Bigfoot is real? Or look at this UFO picture, you know? Uh, be the XO. I don't know. And I, I need an XO that's not going to get scared. I There's a lot of people that are scared of my driving, so my captaining is probably going to... Uh, yeah, it's going to be jarring, so let me drop into my Discord here. do 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 Ah, uh, I am loud. There we go. That should be better. All right, so I've got this, and then I'm going to fire up Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts is a game that you have seen me play before, but now it has a campaign. And I'm going to play as 1890s Germany, which is where they're trying to make uh, this whole German state thing like... Uh, completely fact and not theory, but they've only had 20 years to kind of slap it together. Good evening, Mr. Diggs. hey -o. So, I bought a Keurig because I was tired of burning coffee on the coffee pot I had that was a million years old and ancient, you know? And I, I don't like treating myself, as you know. And I agonized a lot, and I finally bought a Keurig because these new ones are supposedly very good. And we have one in my office, and it, it makes okay coffee. So it came with a package of coffee that is Girl Scout cookie flavored coffee. And I said, oh, well, it came with it. I suppose I have to drink some. And I must admit, I have taken a liking to the Thin Mint coffee, as, as horrible as that sounds. Actually I, sounds really good. It, it's quite nice. All right, we got to design our own fleet. To make it on fleet? Well, it's the German Empire, and I'm using air quotes. So, I this many years into the game, I finally got myself something uh, that I, that I wanted that was small and reasonable. I was like, I'm gonna get me a nice coffee machine that makes coffee quicker, but not better. All right, let's see. Well, that and a machine gun, right? We memed that we memed that into existence. Um, for those of you out there who don't know, uh, I I did make a plea or a joke. It was a plaintive uh, measure over YouTube. I said, "Man, I'd, I'd sure love to have a machine gun." We were playing Payday. That happened. Um, so there is now a BPL machine gun, which is pretty impressive so don't let your memes be dreams boys and girls this is all very possible 100 percent true we joked i said hey when i have to get a machine gun just send it on in the bpl and what do you know <laughs> yeah so just just saying like don't let well okay it's a little more complex than that but that's that's the end result Pablo wants to oh, make... Oh, yeah, there was a lot of steps. There were a lot of steps. And the the other thing is that, uh, you know, Pablo... Pablo wants to make cheese. And... I mean, well, first of all, what's... Okay, what is Pablo's cheese named? I kind of want to know. What's up with the mix? Yeah, oh... All right, so Albania's not playing ball. We even made a little bit of a radio spot commercial. They're not biting. I don't I don't know why they won't play. Uh, because all we want is a couple of mix. It's no big deal. 
it's no big deal at all. I mean, it. I. They're not even real MIGs. They're the Chinese knockoffs. They're the Chengdu like F5 and F7s, which are pretty good actually. But still, it's it's like, I I I want them. You know, the for reasons personal. You know, for all lawful purposes. There's that box you check. You know, that's what you're supposed to do. And if if they need any more proof, you know, you'd be like, that's none of your business. Department of no fun, whomever they may be. I'm also building this very bad Monopoly era battleship because I'm limited to 9,000 tons. And it goes, uh, I got a nine inch gun forward and aft and that's fucking pathetic. They're black powder guns. Those are fucking pathetic. I'm going to put all these little bitch ass two inchers. Those are fucking pathetic. But, here's my plan. This may not be the smartest plan in the world, but I'm going to try to build really fast battleships, because I tested a few with Manglex, and uh, I think they have merit. However, this will come at a compromise, and that compromise is safety. Particularly crew safety, which I value very little. But if you guys have any questions, just ask them in chat, and Diggs would be so good as to perhaps uh, assist in reading those uh, for a measure of time. Yep. All right, let me remove the bulkheads. Crew doesn't need those. All right, let's up that speed. Let's get these up to 26 knots. No shit. All right, uh, 25. I'm going to design some battle corvettes. Battle corvettes that you know, mm -hmm. kind of. Um, it's battleship size, but I'm only doing that to get the machinery speed up because these are basic bitch steam engines. These ships should be going 60 knots. However, by doing some radical alterations in ship design, I've designed some very cheap battleships, kind of, that have long range and can do uh 24 and a half knots, which means I can run anyone down and with decent armor and torpedoes. I win. Do you have a favorite cereal? No. I used to like Cinnamon Toast Crunch, but, you know, keto diet, so... Yeah. It's it's one of those things. I really I've don't... I've seen some, like, keto cereals, but, yeah, but it's, it just seems like it's not a good idea. It's air quotes. It's like keto cereal, and it's it's like each one has an asterisk, and they're like, well, if you follow this formula, it could be construed as keto, and I'm like, I know what a lie is. I'm Why not... wouldn't Albania want USD? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to shit on them. I'm not saying, "Ho ho, Albania poor." I'm just saying, Albania, you got, you got money. And I know you guys got in a little bit of trouble back in the day with the whole rebrand packaging of the Chinese ammunition during the uh, Afghan war bit, you know, in that Dogs of War movie. But you know, the, the people have forgotten about that, except for people like me. But you know, people have forgotten about that. I need to name this ship. Need to name it. Uh, yeah, I, it's a secret weapons program. I'm I'm thinking. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Hmm. Best rarity of steak. I know that one. Huh. Medium rare. Let me think. Let me think. I mean, it needs a good name because I want to keep it secret, but I'm going to call this uh, Shoebox. You know? Shoebox class. They'll be like, what is Graves that? Graves asked, does keto diet stuff work? And I would say, hell yeah. Well, it depends on your goal. Um, mine, and I just want to say this. I'm not trying to tell anyone to go on any fucking diet. Please consult with a medical professional and a doctor before changing your diet. Do not listen to some random internet people before making health decisions. Unless it's tax. No, absolutely not. I, it's it's one of those things where I'm just like, please, but um, I had Barrett's esophagus and I had GERD. And as you can hear around 2015, 2016, my voice starts to get really fucked up on the channel. I was coughing up blood and there were a lot of bad things of signs going on and it was the acid eating my esophagus. So, um, they put me on surgical strength and acids, and the problem with those is eventually, even on surgical strength and acids, you build up a tolerance, and so then you have to switch to the next set, and then the next set, and then the next set, and you get sicker and sicker and sicker, you start to develop kidney problems, and 
No matter what I ate, my, you know, acid was off the charts. No matter what I ate, no matter in what shape I was in, something was just wrong. And so finally, um, I just met with the doctor. He's like, just start pulling shit out of your diet. And it is, uh, I, I tried uh, vegetarian for like six months. I did vegan for a while. That, that was the sickest I ever felt. And then I basically was like all the meats... And that worked. And I was like, what the fuck? How is this real? And it, so I started adding other things in because I'm like, I don't want to just like sit there and be like, yes, meat on table, please. I was like, there's no way that's fucking healthy. So I just started adding things in. And as it turns out, it's mostly keto. It's like on the border between keto and paleo. That's about where it's at. And that's what my digestion can handle. I can't really explain it, but by pulling things out, I figured out what didn't work. Alright, so time to deploy some fucking battleships. Anyways, now that I've told my whole story, um, let's go fleet. That's actually not any different than normal, is it? Uh, let's see. Fleet and being? No, thank you. Fleet and sea control. Could you have celiacs? Celiacs? I was tested for that, and they said no. And I was like, "Did do another test, and they're like, you're poor. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> the only diet I ever had success with, I mean, keto, it works, but it's not sustainable for my lifestyle, um, yeah, it's... was paleo, just going full caveman, just avoiding carbs for the most part and eating a lot of protein. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people have success on paleo. Like, if you want to just try to eat healthy, I'd recommend that. But definitely speak to a doctor. Don't listen to me. I mean, I, I went on this, and this turns out this is what I can eat. But just happens to be keto. It's, you know, other side effects, of course. But it's one of those things where, you know, choose what's best for you. Don't don't listen to some whack job on the Internet tell you how to live your life. My job's to entertain you at best. And if I fail at that, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So I made these really fast fucking ships. We're switching over to HE because this is all black powder charged. And, um, th Zoom in. Yeah. Well, the other issue is these are coal powered ships. So under a full head of steam, my ability to spot things is essentially zero. Then we have the other problem of. These are really crap guns to penetrate armor with. They tend to just explode on contact. So, yeah, let's see. No, Pablo, I have not. I have not. But I can tell some yo mama jokes. Uh, uh, All right, let's see. We're just going to go and uh, we're just going to go. Where are these guys? It's like there is smoke spotted to the northeast. Where? May I have a bearing, sir? Con, bearing, range, distance. That direction, pretty far that way. <laughs> left. More left. It's like, Jesus Christ, guys. <laughs> the you guy, went too far left. <laughs> the guy just has a long stick with a flag on it, right? You know, just sitting there. Hey, Simon. Oh, man, so here we go. We're just going to cruise on in our little... Little boat group. All right, I'm going to have these guys actually fold into a one division, and then I'm going to have them bust out. Look, they're going to herringbone turn. That's pretty cool. Like, All right, now we're just going to cruise. We're just going to cruise, and we're going to find this battle fleet because I need to be aggressive. I'm fighting the Royal Navy, and at this point, even though they are mostly a joke, they are no joke compared to my Navy, which is... A joke so they they are like a carrot top tier comedian people have heard of him and I'm like the guy who thinks carrot top is dumb but has no jokes right this is an interesting time period to say the least and if you think the Royal Navy at this time wasn't a joke go look at some of the wonderful fleet collisions they had <laughs> in the 1890s with like oh dear my my ship seems to have run my other battleship in half Ugh. Is there anything that will make a 1911 more willing to eat hollows? Or should I stick to the full metal jackets? Uh, follow, or polish the shit out of the feed ramp. 
a lot of people don't do that, or if they do it, they do it very, very poorly. Uh, take it to a gunsmith and tell them to polish the feed ramp, or install a uh, Wilson or Paris style uh, ramped barrel, um, and that'll usually clean it up. Uh, my my 1911s tend to run really well, but I polish the shit out of the feed ramp. That irons most of their problems out. All right, so they're to the east now. Where in the fuck are they? The east. Yeah, I know. The east, the west. All right, we're just going to go this way. We're just going to go. This is basically my dad. I don't think about that. I, I don't know. I I would know. I mean, that's 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 why you take precautions, right? I had a joke about that, but I'm not sure if it's appropriate. <laughs> I would err in a caution. It's it's a funny joke, though. I mean, it's it's self-deprecating, but it's pretty funny. Imagine buying a 1911 instead of inheriting it. <laughs> That's usually how you get them. It's like, Granddad cigar box, and there's like a 1911 and a morphine syringe in there. You're like, Jesus. His favorite way to go. Yeah. All right, so here we're doing. We're just we're just rolling. Uh, how do I feel so, about car guns? Yeah, I just saw that. I've shot a few of their things. I hate their Thompsons. I hate the new auto ordinance. I really do. I I think those are terrible guns. I and it's just not good. I've seen so many bad ones, and I'm just like, ugh, you could have made this beautiful as just a pistol caliber carbine, but you're eh, no, it's no. The rest of the car guns, I mean, they're they're kind of a niche market, but people tend to love them. I, I I've never shot a f I, I've never shot one, but they were the guys doing kind of like really creative subcompacts before a lot of people got into it in the polymer striker market. Aha! Found them. I found him. All right, here's what we're gonna do. Sniper rifle that shoots slugs. Well, well, depends on your definition of slug, right? Are are you talking a twelve gauge slug? And then, in which case, you can get a bolt action uh, rifle slug shotgun. Um, and and do as you will uh you know just got to figure out a twist rate and a sabo slug that works and uh put a scope on it and i mean i know people who deer hunt with slugs out to 150 200 yards all right here we go i lost it elemental girlfriend ha 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 um, yeah, no, well, look, he, here's the thing, is I, I made the mistake of having some cold medicine and then streaming, and <laughs> I talked about exes at one point. I, I don't know how we got onto relationships, but we were just talking, and I told the story of the, like, ex that was basically an Amazon, and we, we had a good relationship, and I, you know, talked about, you know, it was kind of sad that it ended, but, you know, mature about it, and people were just... They were like, oh, it's snoo snoo. And so I kind of was like, well, if you fight something on the internet, people just do it more. And so yeah. I was like, well, I'll just lean into it, let it run out of gas, you know? And and so I was like, well, yeah, I just wrote it in as like the, the ex wife or whatever um, of the character. And then I, I started laying jokes that were appropriate to that. And, you know, like, making slight little jabs and jokes to kind of lay that so it felt like part of the story. And I thought that was, you know, just kind of fun. Just to lean into it, acknowledge it as kind of a personal um, self-insert or whatever. But mm -hmm. just just kind of a meme. I, I love honoring community memes. Whatever they are. Even if they're weird, you just kind of give them a nod. And... um I don't know. People have just kept leaning into it. I, I keep getting random messages from someone who are like, we will find you this Amazon woman. And I was like, no, please, random Internet strangers. This is <laughs> really not a great way to start a conversation with me. 
<laughs> like I'm like I, I appreciate the kindness. I appreciate it. I really, really do. Um, but I I'm fully capable of of running my own affairs. It's it's just it's kind of weird. It's wholesome but strange. You know what I mean? Um, so this one I like, but I'm not sure how well I'll be able to answer it. It says from a historical what if scenario, how would the Atlantic War between 1920s UK and US have gone? Oh, cool. War Plan Red. All right, that's what he's talking about. Um, War Plan Red were the series of the rainbow war plans that we drew up as part of the fleet problems in response to in the 1920s. And so you kind of came up with, we came up with these master plans of like, what if X attacks us? And it was just like, what to do and how. And so War Plan Red is versus the UK, which at that point is the Empire, which includes Canada, which includes everything else. So the idea basically was drive the U.S. Army into Canada and take it, which would have taken about 12 seconds because they would have been like, what is going on? Followed by, oh, the Army's here. Um, and then you would basically uh, put the Atlantic battleship squadron into the Caribbean and then running up and down the East Coast, running interference and trying to stop the Brits from gaining resources from their colonies in uh, the Caribbean and in the North Atlantic. And over time, hopefully fight a defensive battle while we buy time for our yards to actually up our navy. But even then, it would be a defensive war and probably not very successful. I mean, that's just my theory. Right. That's not a game theory. All right. I, I slowed down just a moment because I, I wanted my boys to... Oh, wow. No, they, they all, they're all being weird. What the fuck? All right, we're going... Here so if go. there was an origin of this, if there was an origin story of the joke, what's the in-universe, in-character origin of how Professor Tex met his wife? Um, I think I've heard a couple of these. I, I've, I've pitched a few ideas because, like most things, I believe nothing is really canon I, in, until it's printed. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. when you're writing a book or a movie or an RPG, because you're a DM, so let's say you start writing a scenario, you know that there are naturally three or four possible really, really major outcomes to like any any event, and you plan for those as best possible. Um, I've I've I threw a few around, and I, I was thinking just like one of those really stupid coincidence stories of um, like a mercenary calling a batchel as like talking mad shit and not knowing what it means. So it's like, oh yeah, well you know, I, I if if you fucking lose, you have to be my slave. Ooh, and then that turns out to be real, and it's like, oh, oh I'm a slave now. No, no, like you, you win and you take them as a basically work slave, and it's 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 something the clans do. They're like, I will beat you and make you my bondsman, and you hold them in bond until they pay off their debt through honor and good deed and everything else. It's uh, kind of an interesting approach to an honor uh, society, but. I, it's something like that as an accident would be fucking hilarious, especially if you didn't know any better. And they're like, well, okay, now what must I do? And you're like, oh shit, like I'm in charge of this person that is also probably welcome nowhere. Um, so it's kind of a classic fish out of water story, I guess. But I have a few other ideas. It's just, eh, I haven't put thought into it. I, it does not occupy my time. Oh. This coffee Hell is yeah. pretty okay. It's like a step above diner coffee. We're still trying to bully Yip into sending more uh, dream and plot or dark matter. It's good stuff. That's that was actually really good coffee. Met her, you met her on Comstar Tinder. Comstar Tinder. Oh my God, that Local would be Clan Mills wanna hate you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that is so good. <laughs> no, what I bet Comstar would have a personals, right? And they would be like, "You can match anyone within ten light years for this plan." And you like put your little thing on there, and it's like <clears throat> you fill out your questionnaire with Comstar, and they like send it out. 
and everyone within 10 light years on that dating service gets an alert like so and so has signed up and you like do a quick read through and like Comstar's intelligence <laughs> Comstar's intelligence It's a hard one to hear in general <laughs> oh, No 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 it, imagine if Comstar's intelligence had a had a like printout of the person so when you got their dating profile it showed everything they lied on and you could pay extra for that oh that's awesome yeah so it's like so and so says they're this and that and then there's like a little button it's like for 15 c bills you could get the truth <laughs> and you're like <laughs> yeah i'll take dating plus I mean, I, I think that that would just be kind of funny. I love little things in the margins and stories. And I <laughs> like little, I, I like thinking about little things in the world, right? You know? Yeah. Just just little little things in the world. I, I think that's that's pretty awesome. Oh, man. Yes, I do. But I mean, as far as things go, this is more of a fan creation mimicking something in my real life. And that's their their thing. I mean, if they want to write something up that makes them feel happier to help contribute thought to it, they're welcome. I mean, it's it's a character. And if you guys want to create something in your head that you feel is valid, it's valid. I mean, I'm not gonna be like one of these pretentious guys who's like, no, my OC always does this. It's like, yeah, he would never do that. He's too pure in. <laughs> it's like, all right. There's nobody's pure in battle tech. There's no good people. It's just He's the like, last good person. <clears throat> well, there are a few people that are like noble, stupid, but noble. They're all flawed. That's that's why I like battle tech is everyone's like humanly flawed, but. You end up with these characters that are just like, I can't see obvious evil or I won't act on something till it has to kill me. And you're like, you noble dumbass. That's why I like Battletech. It shows the other side of like someone being pallid dumb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Forsooth, I will defend you. I'm glad Why? I don't do that voice that through that whole game. Um... I'm sure all the players would have lost it. It is a very annoying voice. It's funny as hell. <laughs> but yeah, I get <laughs> too much, too much, yeah. <clears throat> well, I mean, playing as the pallid dumb is really rewarding. Um, I, I really I really have a lot of fun with it, but it's, it's just like, <laughs> you know, those skeletons were out there, and I was like, ha, hello, you seem to be oh, very yeah. skeletonic. <laughs> And oh yeah, just, you just you just straight walk up to greet the the gigantic zombie. <laughs> it's like oh, yeah, and it's it's just a home for some squirrels. You're like, hello, hello, small <laughs> squirrels. How are you doing? Yeah, we're playing tomorrow. Just tell so right. you know which week it is. One second. Unless you got some house stuff to do. No, just one second. Uh huh. Yes, live. Science Wizard, Battletech Hard, Andrew Klinsky. Put your ship fiction. Anything cool? All right, I'm back. Sorry no about problem. that. So it no looks problem. like we just did a drive by on this guy. And, <laughs> well, take that Cornwall. 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 <laughs> it's just a sound like Hodor, you know, just <laughs> All right, here here we go. Yeah, so we made the fast battleship. We're cranking along at 24 and a half knots in 1890. This is wrong. The enemy is probably like what in the fuck? Here we go. Oh, you can burn my ship, but the freeboard is low, so it will put itself out. It is noted. It is noted. Oh, man. Don't worry about it. 
Running in the 1890s. Yeah, I mean, this is, like, apocalyptically fast. The thing is, is it has little baby dick guns, and then it has some, like, little two-pounders. So we'll see. All right, let's keep rolling. We're going to just chase this guy down. He can't stop me. They cannot stop Battlefleet. We are too fast. We are mighty warriors. Oh, where's he going? Here we go. All right. Oh, there's a good one. Bob Bobson said, Cleaner's mistake dating app for Batchel Dual Finder. <laughs> they, they read through your... <laughs> They read through your battle experience, and they're like, Ah, I select this one to fight. He will make an excellent combatant. And he's like, Oh, wow, there's a girl in my area. I didn't... No, that seems like kind of a Nordic name, but okay. What started as a fight to the death ended in an awkward divorce. This summer. This summer. All right, so... We are chasing them down at speed. <laughs> it looks like they're trying to get away. They have much heavier guns than I do, but they have much less speed. We are we are going we are going to run them down. This is pretty great. All right, here we go. Yar. Time to run you down. Yar. You know, it, fast battleships where it's at in 1890s. I hope the torpedoes uh, are. <laughs> okay, the torpedoes are faster than the ship. Because I, I was thinking at this speed, I was like, wait, in this time period, I was thinking like you, they crawl out of the tube and then they're just mm -hmm. matched with this ship and go off. Oh, he's turning. You bastard. Were there ever, ever any manned torpedoes? Uh, yeah, they're called Kaiten, and the Japanese did those. Of course the Japanese did them. Well, uh, that's, that's how you keep fighting, I guess. You know, you, you can use people or you can use technology. Okay, he tried to torp me. Looks like I got torped, however, I'm going to torp him. Now we're ramming each other. Now it's a pirate ship. Now we're just shooting at each other at point blank. Arr! 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 <laughs> this is dumb. Okay, that was that was very stupid. Uh, it looks like it was super effective though. And here comes the Weissenberg to fuck him up. <laughs> oh yeah, now yeah, that's 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 some crunch. Well, good day, battleship. Got some solid crunch out there. Uh, yeah, I'm sinking, but so is he. Excellent. So we just did a pit maneuver on the Royal Navy. <laughs> <laughs> Pull over. <laughs> just tear each other open. Oh my god. That is amazing. <laughs> All right, HMS Emperor of India, hunt you down. All right, here we go. We're getting in there. <clears throat> hmm. This is a really, really good boat. I against all odds made a made a handsome boat here. It's holding. Pew, pew. Well, I mean, right now we're just doing a bit of drift. To swap for some grape shot. Um, well, canister shot really wasn't much of a thing in this time period. However, Hotchkiss revolving cannons were. This was the era where they just bought crazy naval weapons. I mean, if, if you want to see crazy, they, they also had the, um... Oh, oh, God. oh, that's the name of this one. But they, they also had back then the, uh... I want to say it was the uh, USS Vesuvius? It was a dynamite cruiser. The, the idea was it had a pneumatic gun that would launch like a bundle of dynamite and then you'd blow it up. And the enemy wouldn't know they were being bombarded. And they used it in the Spanish-American War and it just like confused the Spanish garrison. They were like, why are there just random explosions in the dark? 
<laughs> like it, it's not demoralizing. It's just confusing. It's just hey, you're just like, what was that? Yeah. Oh, they just stand there. <laughs> what exploded? What was that noise? <laughs> what exploded? Why? All right, here we go. Oh yeah. Yep. He's like, no, I don't want. So his battleships are capable of doing 17 knots. Mine can do 24. He cannot run from us. <laughs> the end times are beginning. Hello, Royal Navy. I am Speed. My ships are made out of cardboard. Okay, where's he going? All right, he wants to try to escape. Here we go. We're going in. Fuck the optics, here we go! Pull a crazy Ivan. Well, he's got nowhere to go, and I'm about to give him a little bit of a uh, drive-by at point-blank range. Oh, this is dumb. Look at this. Here comes my navy. Gonna take his navy for a scrape. Oh. The only issue I have right now is that your back gun is somehow shooting through. No, he's your, not. Your he's, he's not. He's uh, hasn't fired yet. He just pointed oh. it straight forward and was waiting till we turn left or right to engage. Oh, shit. So he, he's he been sitting there like waiting the whole time. Like, can I fight in this war, please? And I'm like, maybe. <laughs> that should be in the back. Like, right? come on, turn. <laughs> Something the guy in the rear control tower. He's he's just like nope not yet. Okay soups on So this guy is trying to run uh, However, he's gonna run into Kaiser Barbarossa here who's going to make him really fucking dead. Oh Yeah, this is the good shit. Oh This is gonna be good He's like, uh oh Man, he is nothing but flames right now Splendid. Drop the Tordabos. Ah, yes, there they are. Oh, he's returning the favor. That's unfortunate. Ah, yes, the engines where I store my coal. Same back to him, though. Actually, it looks like he has some sort of torpedo protection. And the Kaiser Barbarossa is just now a swimming pool. But don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. I think we've put him out of action. I think we'll be fine. He seems to be tipping. He's having a bit of a list. He has a pronounced list. Pronounced list to starboard, he's going over. He just doesn't know it yet. Because I'm about to ram him with this thing. Because the bow's already damaged and the captain's dead. Meaning the crew can get away with anything. They just have to say the captain ordered it before he died. Pablo knows an ancient sea shanty for luck. Do you think it's perhaps uh, YMCA or in the Navy? It's, it's probably one of those. Those are his favorite sea shanties. That and the theme to Matlock. <laughs> All right, I'm tired of this whole using guns business. All right, let's, there we go. BT-7 of the sea. Yeah, I'm just gonna give him a little bit of a boop there. Complicate that whole flooding situation he's having. Oh, he's turning. How cute. Ah, yes, Kaiser Barbarossa's coming in. It appears the Royal Navy is having some difficulties with Turbo Navy. Turbo Navy being the best Navy. Now remember the N-squared law, which says if they have a number of holes and I have a number of holes, tonnage for tonnage, I need to bring 25% more because I will take one-to-one -one losses if engineering and technology are the same, that being the assumption. And uh, they built whole navies on this principle. Ah yes, he is now encircled by friends, and by friends I mean everyone who has guns that can shoot through- Ooh, that was a good hit there. Yes, welcome to Sink. Alright, so he lost 2,400 men 
in two <sighs> battleships. I lost one battleship. He also lost a heavy cruiser. Uh, that is a victory for You're me. You're the winner. I am the winner. However, this may not be a strategic victory because if he can put my ships out of order and I spend a lot of money on repairing shit, he can wear me down. He has a bigger navy, but he has only three battleships now. Oh, this looks good. This, this is so very good. Look at this. Big old fucking battleship fleet and my transports. Because I don't have destroyers or anything. This is, this is actually before destroyers. Because destroyers were originally torpedo boat destroyers. And torpedo boats were the light menace of their day. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get a beverage, but then I'm going to come back and clap their cruiser fleet, and I'm going to run them down because there's no way they have engines bigger than mine, and I think I might be able to actually chase their cruisers down. This all is, right. No, this is going to be horrific for all involved. Turbo Navy. Turbo Navy. Yes, she did, Will. It's live. Uh, I don't really sing. Floods is in my car. I'm a, I'm a diva in there. Teach the fear of meaning. All right. And we're back. All right. Let's go defend a convoy. We gotta defend some Salsig. Some of that imported German Salsig. Hmm. Okay. Pablo's referring to the Minecraft joke book, and I'm gonna say this. <laughs> he was destroyed. If you ever, 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 and I, I'm just saying this as an autist, but if you ever go to a party and you need to disengage and be allowed to disengage, that is to say one of your normie friends has conspired to bring you out into the world against your will, and you need to correct this. So what you do is you go out and you buy the Minecraft joke book, and you memorize it, and when people at the party look at you and you want to leave, you just start rattling them off. Deadpan. And they will let you go. In fact, they will escort you out of that party because they will not believe that you are mentally stable. The Minecraft uh, <laughs> joke book is pretty bad. It's pretty bad. It's, it's really unpleasant. Oh my god, what is this maneuver? No! That's not uh -oh. how you join formation. <laughs> this is... Ah, <laughs> uh, guys. This is... Okay, this is... No, no please, no. Please, no, left. Boat, let... But, listen. All right. You know what? You tried, and I'll give you that. We're turning into this formation right now. We're going to do a breast, and we're going to do loose, and we're just going to go right at him. We're just going to go right in there. I know, I saw, um, don't worry about it. Boat's left. Please rudder work. Meanwhile, in a different war... Alright, let's just chase their cruiser fleet down. This will be great. I'm faster than the cruisers with my battleships, which shouldn't happen. Guys, I gave you one job. Oh my god, you sweet... Oh. Hessen, Vettin, come on, please. What, hey, what are you doing? That's it. We're gonna need to do some training exercises after this. We're gonna have to talk about left and right. Okay, I'm just... I... Guys, no. Look, one of you cut the rudder one way, and one of you the other. So get out there with a stick. Guys, oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, you know what? You can, you can just live like that. If you want to be like that, just enjoy. You live like that. Jesus Christ. 
All right, here we go. Yeah, they joined formation. Good job. They are really into this right now. Mother of God, just cut your engines. All right, so we are having a point-blank fight with the whole cruiser fleet out here. They are going to try to torp us. I know they are. So I have to fight very aggressively at knife fight distance. Knife fight city. Pretty much. However, I did get a torp off in the water. Oh, shit. All right, I'm going to take one. All right. Well, I hit him with a torpedo, so it's all fair. All right, we're going to turn through the uh, formation. Looks like the battleship uh, Schlesen is uh, going to go to old Davy Jones here in a sec. And tell him to kill his engines and stop all everything and hopefully not sink immediately because I think I put two bulkheads in the whole goddamn thing. There's probably like a door on top that holds the air in. Holy shit, is he still like coasting at speed? He's at 2% float and coasting and still fighting. Good job, Schlesen. You're pretty cool and you don't afraid of anything. Okay, the rest of the other battleships are here. It's time for point blank torpedo dance. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. That's what I like to see. All right. Probably gonna say. For the Kaiser. For the Kaiser. For Grandpa. Zero for. Oh, wow. Torpedo beats right there. How dare you attack me, mortal? The Schlesen is like still shooting. Engines out. Everything's out. He's fighting. This is amazing. These guys don't give a fuck. Well, take that enemy cruiser fleet. Man, this is this is top tier shit. I tell you, back when we fought them cruisers in the cruiser war, we did it with a hammer. Just gotta jump over the boat and knock them pins out, and it all falls apart. Alright, let's see. Yeah, whoa. Yeah, we're just uh, beating the living shit out of this guy. For existing. It's pretty bad. Okay, That's how we do it. Look, these two guys are still alive somehow. Jesus Christ. I need to move these guys to the other formation. But, uh, Ostfriedland is still going. Somehow. He's like, yeah, I'm still in the fight. And I'm like, your deck is a wash. He's just having a drive. He seems fine. Yeah, I mean, he's, you say that now, but he, he doesn't really seem fine. In fact, he seems... And how like, many, how many boats are really in the sea? In, in or under, because we're about under. to add some to the other. All right, there we go. So, a quick question. I picked up a box they called City Tech while cleaning out a friend's base. I'm wondering if it's a good way to do some friends of tabletop battle tech. No, not that book on its own. No. It's uh that's a good source book, but it's uh not on its own. I mean, to introduce people to battle tech, I I would say uh Alpha Strike's pretty good for that. All right, let's get up there with our speed and run this last guy down. Like fucking chads. Fucking chads. That's that's the idea, man. Just get going. All right, don't worry about the burning, sinking ships. They're fine. It it just ran out of go juice. They're fixing it. Sometimes battleships just get a little sad and they get mopey and they lay down in the water, you know. And people are the same way. So it's just sitting there. He's having a. Think about how much water should be inside. Preferably very little. You know, so he's he's working on that. 
It's it's like anything you change in life. Just one little change at a time. Like water out of the bill. <laughs> <laughs> They're trying to fix it. It's mostly full of water. All right, so we're building up steam to get up to steam to chase this guy down. All right, here we go. Yeah, they're trying to pump the hole clear and get everything fixed up real nice. So we'll see. Nice. Nice. That's a keeper. <laughs> That's a 10. Where that guy? Oh my god, they're Fuck ramming your shit. Oh, they're ramming their shit again. Stop ramming! For the love of God. Just stop. They can't help themselves, but all, all they want to do is crush things. Oh man. So later, They just have to have like torpedoes on sticks in front of the boat and ram. Uh, those are called spur torpedoes. And, oh. and those, those were a thing for a while. Uh, if, if you want to see the story of the Hunley, uh, it managed to sink a target in itself using one. But that Mad Max shit has a basis in history and was considered a <laughs> uh, proper naval weapon for a time. Uh, spar, spar torpedoes are pretty uh, dumb, you know? And by that I mean that it's, it's one of those things of like explosive dangerous. No one holding hand. How get outside of hand? Stick. It's that first generation of, of thinking of how do I get things that I want dead, dead, without putting myself next to it, you know? It's like you, you invent a stick and then you sharpen it. Small improvements. Oh, look at this. Barracuta? C-O-U-T-A? That's a weird spelling. What the fuck? Alright, so, yeah. Uh, we, we sank to them, and we took some rather severe damage, but we sank their fleet so they can go fuck right off. <laughs> we sink the fleet. Oh man, we got another battle up coming. Let's go to finances. Uh, looks like we're doing alright, but need to save a little bit of money there. If possible. There. I'll just make it go up by 1%. And then let's go to the convoy. Oh, wow. Battleships versus cruisers. Yes, I will fight this. That good old stick combat. I can't wait until we can unlock more or less crab ships. That would be nice. <laughs> what if your ship doesn't have much armor, but the, all that tonnage went into bilge pumps, so they pumped a whole... <laughs> So if they punch a hole, it pumps that water fast so that it could fill. What if what if the whole ship what if the whole ship was just really thin plates you could replace from the inside, right? And and so like you shoot and the, it just goes straight through and does nothing, and then a guy comes over and just replaces the panel. He's just like tick, 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 tick. Yeah, and you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> and they're like the slow <laughs> shell penetrates the ship. Paul Atreides. Uh, you know, I just scrappy from Futurama. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> scruffy, Scruffy's a janitor. Mm -hmm. All right, you're welcome, Magnus. All right, so what we're gonna do is hunt down their cruiser fleet with our battleship fleet because our battleship fleet is great, and that's what we do. We're very speedy battleships for the 1890s 24 and a half knots. That's really boiling. Knots. Knots, yeah. That casual measurement of how many uh, how many yards of poop you can make after going to PF Chang's. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah, I've never I've never been to PF Chang's and had a good meal. Not once. I don't know why. I, I know some people are like, Oh, it's so good and I'm like, It's like a Panda Express that's upscale, you know, that's it. It's Panda Express on nicer plates, honestly. I want the hole in the wall Chinese restaurant. That's what I want. I want the one that has the unfortunate name and then a number behind it. I want like And I want to hear the woman who owns it screaming at her husband in the back for not doing something right. That's I, what I want. I, I want I want the hole in the wall. Chinese restaurant, the little ones with weird lighting and strange music. Those are my favorites. I, I, those, those got the good food. <laughs> Our local sushi place, like, 
its music is an like pretty much anime themes or covers done in like Japanese. And that's fine. I mean, so I, you go in there and you're like, "Wow, I'm listening to like essentially show tunes." <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, yeah, yeah. All right, here we go. We're just gonna get rolling. I mean, well, the guy makes a good point. Blade Runner style ones. You want to sit in a noodle bar in the rain in your trench coat and, uh, you know, be like noodles too. I gotta hunt yeah. down a replicant. <sighs> With my Taurus revolver and star bolt action pistol thing that's that works somehow. I I saw the way, I saw the way they made that work for uh, hot dogs, horseshoes, and hand grenades, and I actually had, it, I admired it because it made sense. Like they were like, oh, it's got some sci-fi stuff. It's got a railgun bit, and I'm like, oh, all right, that makes sense. All right, boys and girls. We're going to roll toward the enemy and our ships and hopefully not collide. Last time we did, so I'm going to make the formation a little loose. I want them to not collide. Please don't go in the same direction, guys. Oh, looks like we got some uh, business. Here we go. Ah, it must yes. have been a hell of a feeling knowing that you hit another ship from that distance back then. Like, well, the average engagement range at like Tsushima and other naval battles of this era are like six thousand, eight thousand yards at most. It's it's not it's not long. It's it's relatively short engagement range. But even then, with black powder guns, that's pretty crazy. Even though they're breech loaders, it's it's pretty amazing to think they were landing and making hits on ships. But if you look at by World War II, I think it's Scharnhorst manages to hit a moving target at like 20,000 meters. So like 20 clicks, like hits a moving target. That's bonkers like levels of gunnery. I mean, that's that's some I, I I don't play. I take trig motherfucker. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's <laughs> it's all analog, too. So then you start looking at the other projects like, you know, the Babylon gun and uh, uh, a Mr. Bull who was then assassinated because he was building super guns for dictators. And then you start looking at like <laughs> the time we used a 16 inch gun to shoot something into space. I mean, there's there's a lot of cool advanced gunnery projects out there that have been tried over the years where they were just like, what if throw harder? And yeah, you can geet stuff pretty hard, you know. The question is why? Because is it cheaper than a missile and more accurate than a missile? But the other thing is that like if you shoot a super shell at somebody and it hits, it obliterates. It's not like a missile where they'll pull little bits out and go, oh, that's how you make your drone or whatever. <laughs> 16 inch shell hits the ground, it's, it's just going to be smashed or explode. All right. Here we go. We're going to get going. All right, so their cruisers, their light cruisers can do 16 knots. I can do 24. This is horrible. Time to kill them. I I had a really cursed idea. I was thinking about making a More really than normal. Yeah, no, this this one's pretty bad. You know, there's a lot of military uh, surplus SKSs out there. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was thinking about uh, talking to a guy I know who will turn uh, stock blanks. I was thinking about getting uh, getting one of those old really beat up SKSs and then making like a Gucci one uh, that's really nice <laughs> and then uh, getting Just them to jewel it. <laughs> no, no. I, I would do like a jewel bolt and everything. And then I would um, just make it super gorgeous and like bluing or like uh, satin Cerakote, you know, and then... <laughs> like titanium nitride the someone's inside. gonna buy that for so much money and you're gonna be like why no i would i just make a gucci one like titanium nitride the internal parts so they look like they're gold but they're actually really slick uh lubricated like uh coning so and and then you would uh <laughs> turn a stock out of grade a walnut so it's you, you just make the anti 
uh, or you make the Gucci or Chairman's Edition SKS, you know, because some are more equal than others. That was, uh, uh. <laughs> I, I just think that would be kind of fun. The Animal Farm Edition. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I like some really dumb gun ideas. Afghani's Presidential Guards Nickeled M14s. Oh yeah, that's that's kind of neat. I I do like some of the one-off guns that are out there. Just just kind of neat presentation guns. You're like cool. All right, so we're gonna just start rolling. All right, we're gonna yeah. I mean, we're just chasing their fleet down and beating the shit out of it. This is uh this is pretty great. They seem to be uh, wanting to raid my convoys and find, in fact, uh, they fucked around. And now they shall, in the uh, words of uh, our forefathers, find the fuck out, of course. That's actually the best way to describe the difference uh, between effect and effect is, you know, fuck around and find out. Ah. All right, so... Here we go. We be rolling, they be sinking. <laughs> they be rolling, sinking. Trying. Yeah, I mean, my ships seem to be pretty easy to put holes in, but also pretty easy to fix, so this is nice. I think he's 74 or 47 or 74. If I could find a good 74 builder, uh, yeah, hands down. I, I would love to employ a 74 builder. I'd love them to build me a 74 um, as close as can be to maybe uh, more one of the more modern AKs. I think that'd be pretty cool. That or a like, mid-70s one with all the bake light. I think that'd be kind of nice. All right, so here we go, boys. Just running their poor ships down. It appears it's time to run them down. The hungry years have begun. Or whatever that means. I don't know. I mean, what does sea captains say nowadays? Other than like, no, the ship isn't Yarr. sinking. Remember that Costa Concordia guy? I was like, what the fuck? Alright, look. Uh-oh. Okay. Now we've had a... Ah, uh, shit. Alright, so I was gonna do a drive-by, right? That was the original intent of this maneuver. I was like, <laughs> I will drive by and torpedo him, and then I will cock my hat and be gone into the sunset. And instead, um, I just drove into him and ruptured everything abaft of the main, looks like the engine room, so, I mean, it was effective, but it wasn't good. Um, I mean, I'm gonna say it was intentional, but Jesus Christ, I mean, it was a bit of a, it was a bit of a boo-boo, but there was a time when those two ships were conjoined and you probably could have looked through a hole in the hull and seen a surprised man from the other side. <laughs> On the other side, just minding his own business. Like, what? Just hear a call from the bridge. Brace for impact as the uh, ship drives through you. Oh, God. All right, let's just agree that we know what we're doing, even if we don't. I mean, here's the fun thing. Uh, my... My battleships are not significantly better armed than their heavy cruisers. They're just a lot faster. Right. Hessen, what are you doing? You need to go fast. Oh my god. Right out of gas. No, I think he got confused. Alright, there we go. Have some leads. Just a few. Yeah, I think I need to ram them again. You're right. Ramming speed. 
Ramming speed is always valid. Um, I don't, I don't really care if people are just like, oh, you can't, eh. I'm like, no, you can always ram. Always ram. All right, so I've got one fully functional battleship left, and I'm going to use it to run them down. You know, if I was on a ship at this period, and I wanted to... Uh, yeah, it looks like he's breaking off. Shit. Yeah. He lost 500 guys. Fuck. Imagine, like, sending your ships out in this time period, and you know that, like, you're in a cruiser base, so there's, like, 20 cruisers there, and they send out, like, eight at a time. And imagine waving goodbye to your friends and shit in the cruiser fleet, and be like, all right, give them hell, boys. And then you're like, oh, a few weeks later, they're like, yeah, we found a life raft. I mean, that happened in this period. Ships just disappeared. They went out and couldn't get a message off before they went down. So they'd just be like, less came back. That's nuts. Oh, what's, what's funnier is during World War I, there were actually observation zeppelins that were present at quite a few naval battles. So I just imagine the nuts of flying a zeppelin. Just imagine flying a Zeppelin over a giant fucking naval battle and like the wind changes and it starts like blowing you over the wrong side. You're like, oh shit. <laughs> As everyone on that shit with something bigger than a slingshot tries to shoot you out of it. I mean, this, this was the, uh, this was the era of um, like 70 millimeter anti-aircraft guns. They were like, ah oh, yes, an anti-balloon gun. <laughs> So, yeah, that would have been unpleasant. All right. Oh. Okay, so there, it's it's battleship on battleship, and this is Prince Regent Luitpold. The Prince Regent Luitpold, huh? All right. Or Leopold. A loophole. Loophole. My name Loophole, and I'm a Prince Regent. All right, so what? Whole region, a prince after me. So they have a battleship that is not going to be able to outrun mine, and I am just going to ram him to the bottom of the ocean because he has so few battleships left, and I think this would be, like, on our postcard as a nation. I I think that, like, when you when you get a stamp, it would just show our battleships, like, fucking hog-wilding over one of theirs and just cutting it in half. <laughs> it would be like, <laughs> it'd be like, ah, yes, the 20-cent stamp. The battleship ram. You know, another thing that I wanted to say that is really nice over YouTube that's kind of wholesome about the community is people will draw weird thumbnails and just send them to me, and sometimes I just use them. <laughs> they're they're pretty fun. It's, it's that's just... That's awesome. Well, yeah, because it's coming from someone who watched it, and they're like, hey, here's my summation of the episode, and it's just like a Photoship apocalypse, and I'm like, okay, I like it. Oh man, people asking uh Planetside 2. We did that back in the day. Uh it's not a game for us, I think. Yeah. No. I I don't like games that require me to dump out lots and lots of money to to do stuff, and I also don't like games where there's like a meme faction that has its own rules that wears spandex. I'm talking about the Vanu. Jesus Christ. No, we played as the uh, Ter <laughs> we played as the Terran Republic, and I think all we did was just get assloads of submachine guns and just fill the air with with lead and shotgun blasts as we ran straight at the enemy. I mean, we we were like at Soviet shot guards. It was hilarious. We were just like ah and ran at them in waves. I don't think we ever accomplished anything. But if if I if I got people into Planet Side, it would be a meme of a thing. I'd be like, "Hey, let's all play Planet Side," and then I'd put out an alert right on on the YouTube, and I'd be like, "Let's form this giant fucking division," and then as part of this giant fucking division, let's just run around in a mob and be really weird and just do like meme weapon builds. Like, okay, everybody shotguns, sawed off shotguns. But yeah, fuck the Vanu. God damn it, I hate them so much. I just hated that it was like, these guns hit hard. 
and they have shorter range as a result and lower rate of fire. These guns have a bit more of a spray, but a higher rate of fire, but lower damage. And, you know, there were reasons to choose different guns. And then it was like, here's the fully automatic sniper rifle that aims at the face and has no bullet drop. And I'm like, but that's not even remotely normal. And they're like, they're the Vanu, it's okay. We, it's, it's, it's for people who, you know, like to spend money. It was just like, ugh. Err, we used to beat up on the Vanu until they were like, you can't have unbalanced servers. Uh, we, we got most of them to stop playing on one of them. Uh, cause we would just run around and chase them with like crap. It was, it was kind of fun. I don't know. I, re I remember the first Planet Side as being this completely different game and I like doing logistics. And there's a lot of games that I think that I would really enjoy if they ever, you know, made it like I I know that a lot of people are gonna get out there and get like mad if I say too much but it's it I'll, I'll just shoot from the hip on this one like I think it would be great if Star Citizen had all those planets and all those stations and all the things they want to do I, I think that would be hilarious because I could very much see the BPL doing what we did in EVE Online and definitely running a group called Cargonia or something where it's it's like this giant alliance of people who follow follow the like Cargonian rules so it's like everyone trades and it's like a mob thing like a nod and a handshake and uh, you know everybody has to make so many acquisitions and move them to the head office or some other weird thing that we do and mm -hmm. uh, you know we we just go around and play as whack jobs and you know, because I, I like role-playing rather than doing anything with any major aim other than just having fun. Yeah. But I'm I'm not sure if we'll ever get that game, you know. Because I remember the last time we played Star Citizen, I got a penguin. I got a stuffed penguin uh, because I was scared and I needed something to comfort me. In, in in the terrifying uh, space future with random face movements and uh, T-posing people who would disintegrate and sink through the earth at random times. In this nightmare dimension in which uh, tacos are eaten in two bites, burgers are eaten in two bites, and seemingly endlessly, um, I, I found that it was an interesting world, but perhaps a bit premature for my visit and extended stay. But I remember the thing that made me laugh my ass off was when you got out of that turret and then started panicking because you were phasing through all the poses <laughs> and all of the dimensions known to man. All of the possible poses his character could have made and all it and just simultaneously and not and time curved in on itself and he was like a vibrating blur of colliding body parts. And of course, being a seasoned spaceman, I had to put him out of his madness. However, I, I found- I was only gonna get worse. <laughs> I only found that one in three bullets failed to hit you because you were not there at that time. Um, it was it was pretty wild. Um, but yeah, that, that kind of summed it up. I mean, I think the ships look great. I think the sound design is good. I, I, I like that you can go around and be a weirdo, like, you can low crawl around people who are trying to mind their own business and you can just yell at them. Like, you can, you can crawl up at them and make weird faces and you can be strange and socialize in new and interesting ways, but, like, I hope the space ends up being more than, like, a few planets. I think that would be kind of cool. Not sure. I agree. I do have Elite Dangerous, and I remember the only thing I actually liked about Elite Dangerous, because I, I grew up playing um, X-Wing versus TIE Fighter, TIE Fighter, all that shit as a kid. I love space games, shoot, shoot, bang, bang. Played the original Elite on a friend's, uh, I think he had it on a Commodore 64 or an Amiga. I can't remember which. But... The thing is, is that I'm not great at the dogfighting in that. I find it really clunky, and I think that 
it would be better if I knew how to do VR, but VR makes me sick. I, I like the heads-up display, but it doesn't feel right using the keyboard to do it. It feels like it's stuff you should reach out and touch. Um, I like the space phone, though. That's what I call it. I just call it space phone, you know, where you can call people and be like, it does the kindar tones. That's what those are called. Um, where it's like beep at the end of it when you talk to people in the game. It's fucking hilarious. Like I, I was calling people on space phone and just yelling at them. And uh, that that was all I did. I just called random people and I was like, hey, your ship is big. And they're like, don't, don't, don't call me anymore. And I was like, what, do you have leather carpets? And then they would like hang up. It was kind of fun. <laughs> um, I mean, if I could drive a cargo ship, not just a weird triangle that's slightly different in size, but if I could like have a cargo ship, I could walk around and check on stuff and play a tramp steamer in like Elite Dangerous. Sure, I'd do that. That'd be awesome. But I don't know if that's possible because I've seen people like, I trade in Elite Dangerous and they fly a different kind of triangle shape ship somewhere and do a thing. And, you know, I, I, I like played playing EVE Online because all the ships were really different, but also autopilot. I mean, I found a lot. I mean, I do dogfight a lot. I, I play a lot of War Thunder and, and I, I'm not playing arcade mode on that, but... I, I don't know. In the dog fighting in that field kind of or field. It field. Jesus. I've been up too long. But the dog fighting in that felt like off. It didn't feel like dog fighting in space like you want in a game where it's like X Wing or whatever. Where it's World War II in space, you're just chasing people down, lasers are blasting, mines, missiles, guy in the rear turret shooting rounds back and forth. Oh, the stabilizer broke, get out there and fix it. You know, just all the crazy action stuff you want. And it, it just also the warping to a thing like you have to slow down and speed up and then slow down and then hit the warp bubble at the exam. I'm like, F -ah. I don't want a parallel park in space. I want to hit a button <laughs> that says launch, and then I want to have a strategic think, and then if I want to dogfight, you know. Oh yeah, see, there's my Elite Dangerous is a long-range cartography simulator for me. I love scanning, collecting data, and uploading it to the community map project. Maps, Mike's one of them helpful people, you know. Ew. Alright, so I'm just chasing their ship. They're chasing... Eh, he... he I can't sink it. I managed to kill some of his crew and bother him. I'm just gonna... I'm gonna let that go. Alright, finances. We're doing okay. And we're building our shipyards up so we can have ships that don't suck. Well, okay. That's a lie. We can have ships that suck less. Oh, shit. Proper fight. Yes. We're going to fight the cruiser fleet again. Tex, you did a good job on the podcast. Thank you. Uh, I had an interview with... Um, I wanted to sit down and speak with uh, Renegade HPG. Uh, he's he's a cool guy. And he had me on his podcast, and I felt it had been a dishonor that I hadn't had him on mine. And we talked a lot about content creation and and many other things. And it was, you know... It was pretty, uh, pretty great. I, I was able to kind of speak about some things I hadn't in a while because we'd both been involved in it. And it was, it was kind of interesting. I enjoyed myself. Oh, my thoughts on Foxhole. Well, all right. So my thoughts on Foxhole... I liked it, the shenanigans were okay, but when you run into a group and every third kid is like screaming and playing like meme tier music and trying to be an edgelord, it's just like, eh. Like, I, I love I love games like Hold Fast. I loved it until the normies found out about it. <laughs> Alright, these guys are just gonna ram. Okay, good job, guys. Yeah, go ahead. Just enjoy some of them fleet maneuvers. Just help yourself to his armor. No, look, this guy's come over to ram the party. Good. No. No. no it. No, oh, God. All right. Please stop.
All right. Thank you. Yeah, I think we get a lot of bump space on these fucking battleships. But no, guys. Um, some other good news, Mike. Uh, we've we've got a uh, we've got some good shit going. Um, we've got the Tech Stocks Battle Tech. The the Warhammer is actually on the um, on the timeline. So, and we've started getting art for a while now. So this has been pretty fucking tight. And I've got some special stuff. I've shown a few people um that i work with but some of the special stuff we've been working on has just been gorgeous and i i think you guys are like gonna really enjoy the fuck out of this i never played sierra outpost all right my boys are doing their thing A good job making your own setting, man. Dragon Axe. The world needs more settings. And and people bitch all fucking day about tabletop settings. All fucking day. All people will do is just, Ugh, I hate Eberron. Ugh, I hate this. Ugh, I hate that. And my, and I go, yeah, I hate Eberron too. But write your own. It's it's easy to throw shit. So I, I want people out there to know that if you're like, I wish there was blah, then write it, make it. All this shit started in somebody's fucking garage, you know? Most tabletop companies start with just a meme and a dream, and then you get published, and you make a few copies, and you get some feedback, and you go to a trade show, and if it's good enough, it sells, you know? Pretty fucking sweet. Griffin's Library on YouTube. All right, folks, go check it out. I may later. BPL drinking game. Take a shot every time Jutland is mentioned on a stream. Well, I won't. All right, so we're going to find their fleet and destroy it. I mean, the thing is, is when it comes down to creation or anything else, I mean, Diggs, you're a DM. How hard is it to build a world? It really matters on where you're going with your scope. I mean, it's easy to make a town randomly in your head and just build up from one session at a time and just play it off the cuff. But if you have some kind of big plan and you start going from... Uh, characters they'll run into, to the town they're in, to buildings in the town, to the patrons that run it, to the government type, the military type. Connecting roads, why were they settled there? What's good about the region? What points it out as a place people would settle? Is there a nearby river? You know, it, it can become as simple as you're in a prison and your thief and your party just managed to take the keys from the guard. And then that's all you gotta tell them besides like, it's a damp prison the bars are kind of rusty. You have no idea where you currently are. And then it's just go time. So it doesn't really take a lot. No. It, but and, if you're trying to, like, introduce someone to a grand world for a long campaign, you got to give them that intro and place them inside a world they can imagine. So it, it could be as hard as you make it or as easy as you make it. And the way is, is you remember, it, it's, as most people who have watched, you know, this tabletop stuff since the inception Gygax started making a dungeon and then the dungeon was under a castle and then the castle had a surrounding ground and he just built it one layer at a time and then over time you get Greyhawk see that's yeah that's the whole starting from what they're, they're build around the players decisions don't build the world for the like you're not making a video game I think that's a lot of early DMs mistakes I sure did where you want to have you kind of look at it as an RPG where you have like all these established locations and your players are totally going to visit them all. But then you find yourself feeling good that you designed it, but a lot of the players will never experience it. And you don't want to force them because then that railroads it. So it comes down to, I personally want to only plan for like one or two sessions ahead, but give that enough thought to know it can derail. Because if I plan for like 20 sessions ahead, two like bandit captains and their leader and then the guy who's really running the thing 
it might not even hit the first guy, you know? The never ending dungeon of Greyhawk, yeah. It's kind of interesting to see approaches to world building. But I mean, I, I like all things. It's it's one of those things where like I'm a huge critic. I've I've said a lot of shit about 40k, especially on the podcast. And I went over why for many reasons. And the thing is, is that I like what I like. People like what they like, and that's all right. I mean, mm -hmm. you can like whatever you like, but it's it's a lot of people say I wish there was X or Y, and there's no reason why you can't make it. And that's kind of neat. I mean, you can you can just make whatever you want. I mean, shit, Mike made Star Trek what it is because he just looked at the thing and was like, nah, I don't like that, and uh, that's dumb, and uh, I'm going to make it my way. And it was great. <laughs> yeah, Mike Mike is a great improviser. Um, we probably didn't do half the things he expected us to do, and our characters developed in a very strange way. Yeah, we, And he was able yeah. to carry that into some great times. And I, like, I rate myself as a DM just because of how busy I am and everything else these days. Like, it, my assessment is, like, fair. I, I think I'm a far bit better writer than I am a DM. But I think that's true of a lot of people because DMing is a skill that requires constant practice to stay, like, in the shit with, you know? Yeah. And, and uh, like, and I will say, like, there are people who are good or bad DMs that will who end up putting themselves in positions that they will never improve because they don't take the time to say, hey, players, and have players that will give them feedback of what they like, didn't like, or do research on how they could make something more engaging. So a lot of like they, a lot of people end up in a situation where they're like, all right, well, how are you going to handle this situation? And the party's just lost and there's nothing you could do because you, you haven't really trained yourself in a way to grab their attention and re-engage them if they get lost. That's that's why you have to play characters that are fun, so you can just accept yeah. everything. But yeah, yep. one one of the things I like is I disembrace random, but in Deputy's Traveler game in the future, uh, I made that character that ended up kind of fucked up. And we we're like, how do we justify this fucked up character being a mechanic and engineer? And we the the idea got floated. Just make a plasma man from Space Station Thirteen. You know, where you're just like a burning skeleton in a spacesuit, and I was like, I don't know, that seems kind of memey. And I started having second thoughts, and then like everyone in the party is like, No, you need to play a burning skeleton now. And I'm like, All right. Well, because there's there's a major thing, especially with our uh, BPL Paradise RPGs. Um, like we know they're not forever campaigns. You're you're not investing something you want to play super long term. So have the most fun you possibly can with it. I mean, if it's a super serious setting and everyone agrees upon it, go for it. But if the second the deputy was fine with Plasma Man, you you like it, it's no longer going to be this deep, sullen, uh, very serious campaign. There's going to be like every time we turn a corner, it's going to be like, all right, that's our mark. And then you turn a corner and the whole area is like shining bright because you're a flaming skull and a space fax suit and it's like all right go there goes stealth <laughs> well, yeah. how are we gonna sneak you through customs <laughs> uh he's my uncle he's under a rare burning disease yeah and i'm just like hello <laughs> i because <laughs> you know he does it wouldn't have normal lungs right so it'd just be like some like synthesizer you know so just be like hello human how is it I too had flesh once, and it's like, huh. Um, see, here's the thing. I think I was going west because it says waste, but it is. You're going west. Yeah. I'm just cruising around waiting till they want to come play because we got the fast battleships. Honestly, it's. If you have good players and a good DM, you can play. You, everyone can just roll a d6 for success. And you can have a good time. Like uh, three, like four, five, and six is success. Six being critical, and one, two, and three being failures. One being the worst result. Like 
system doesn't really matter. You can just make up something on the fly. But if you have like a group of people who know how to laugh at everything, you're going to have a great time. I mean, that's that's true enough. It you just got to you just got to find people that know how to play characters that you you want to put in situations where they're like, "Oh, let him do it. It'll be funny." You know, that that goes a long way uh in making a game really enjoyable. I mean, it if you have characters that people like to put in situations because you want to see those scenes play out, that's how you know you have good players, I think. Oh, yeah. Because I remember when we were playing, and I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but one of the things that I thought was like really made me feel special was when we were playing Deltard Green, uh, which we talked about on the podcast, and it's just a shame we weren't recording it, but the when we talked about Deltard Green, you know, like, a year after we played it and pieced together the events and what have you. Um, I, I remember that you guys kept being like, no, let Groves talk to the guy because he just wanted to hear like what fucked up things <laughs> that I would end up improvising and causing someone to like have brain damage because I just weirded them out, you know, cause it was just like the, the whole rant on the ficus and, and other just weird, crazy things. Oh yeah, and my guy Leo, who's supposedly like the head of this group to a point, kept getting this fucking attitude from from the P- pizza rally, pretzel rally. Oh uh, yeah, it, <laughs> and it, yeah, and I was getting like he was getting sick of being addressed like everything. Hey, you told us to call you if shit was happening, and you keep giving me like sass. So you know what? Here is your favorite person for the rest of the phone call. And then suddenly it's like, yeah, it's like, hello. He's like, oh, fuck. Yeah, my, my <laughs> char- I did a lot of research to play that character well. I mean, I, I, did, I did a lot. I did a lot of research to play that weird Harvard guy. And I, I was just hamming it up the whole time. It killed my throat to do that voice. But I really had fun playing Groves. It's sad how he died. I, I would have rather him getting trapped in that like endless tunnel of falling with the guy he tormented. That would have been hilarious. So we would just oh like, yeah, oh, that'd be a forever prison. We can pass the time by reading books. Let us discuss the North American ficus. Um, just absolutely horrible brain dump of information of a human being. And, uh, yeah, it, it, was, it was the party's brain and not much of one, because he was only really good at bureaucracy. Sure Which, it, it, was, it was pretty funny. I mean, we, we had a lot of weird characters. He, he had an FNFAL and a Korth revolver. And he drove a Plymouth GTX. <laughs> he, was a, he was a weird old guy. Oh, wow. All right, so it looks like we got one more decent fight. We have to try to destroy their battleship fleet, and here's part of it. All right, so we're going toward them. All right, we gotta run these guys down. I like a lot of weird things in world building, though. I, I remember one of the old posts back before TG went, eh, uh, one of the old, 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 oldie posts was great because it was an existential crisis when a guy realized the DM's description of this town was the most horrifying thing in this horror campaign. And it was Brick Town. And so he, you, they came out of like a jungle or heavy woods and there was a town that was made of, of bricks like every building was brick and everyone in the town worked at the brickworks. Like the DM described it in a series of <laughs> questions like that. But then he was like, why is there this house in the middle of the, the why is it this whole town made of brick in the middle of the jungle and everyone works at the brickwork? Like how do they how do they make food? And it was just like everyone was just having a moment of freaking out, like, this makes no fat and just trying to look for like a curse, and it was just a DM going, It's all brick. Why? Well there's a brickworks there. Or does everyone work? The brick works. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to light shells and send them at them. And yeah, there we go. It sounds like a flat economy, but I don't know. We, we, we just had a thing. Oh, yeah, we got some good shooting going on now. 
There's their battleship fleet. There he is. Turn toward him, my pretties. Turn toward him. Present arms. We'll run them down. We'll show them your steel. Alright, we're just gonna go. You know, when I was when I was coming up, the alpha male thing wasn't a thing, right? It it just wasn't. It was just like there were jocks and nerds, and I was definitely one of the nerds, but the uh now there's like alpha and sigma and beta and all this other stuff, and I'm like, why? Is this like is this the the male male version of like believing in like jackoff crystals or something? Them I mean, you do, yeah. Them them healing crystals. The healing jackoff crystals are a big thing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know what kind of faith people put in stuff out there. I mean, whatever gets you through the day and whatever helps you be a good person and helps you self-actualize and improve your life and rise up and when you stumble to keep walking, whatever helps you, that's fine. But I'm just saying, if, if, if you can buy crystals off Etsy with magic powers that turn out to be real, just let me know. Just clue me in. Just clue me in, and I I would be I would be very glad to understand. But but I don't think that's gonna happen. Remember the key thing with jail crystals is you gotta jail with your bro. I understand. It's the rules. I remember uh, someone asked me like it was it was some weird family friend at the last family gathering I went and they were talking about the power of essential oils and they were talking about how there was a certain essential oil that would ward danger away from you and I was like yeah it's called mace that's a very <laughs> effective essential oil in deterring unwanted problems they just <laughs> apply to the eyes and people fall down don't worry about the battleship it's just having a bit of a sink and that's freeboard is very low so they can play shuffleboard and lose the pieces. Or they can wash their shoesies. Oh, I can buy crystals that give me magic powers, but they aren't an Etsy and they're not exactly legal. Are they made by a bald man named Heisenberg? <laughs> 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 oh, well, this is good. Well, Maybe. that'll fix the ship. That'll fix the ship right up. Good job, boys. Little Bayern. Goodbye. Okay. <laughs> um, good job, boys. <laughs> I identify as a submarine. <laughs> yeah, just be like, well, remember, all ships are submarines once, right? Yeah, they usually retire as a submarine. Yeah. Okay, so we had a bit of a oopsie doodle. We're not the smartest navy in the world. We we are we are wasting a lot of time running this down, and that guy was a terrific moron. But that's fantastic. Yeah, let's let's be aggressive with all of our ordnance now. There's no time to be polite. It's time to torp people. I need to sink that battleship. This is the Odin. They put it back together from last time. Good. Good. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how I want to play my space burning skeleton. Um I'm I'm thinking the it is noted voice would be suitable. I just don't want it to get annoying. Uh, I've heard that a lot, and I don't think that's something you should really worry yourself about. It's, it's not like, I think you know the limit on it. Well, and yeah. having like a catchphrase thing is still, you know, it's pretty great for a weird character. I think every like, weird hey, can character. Can you keep an eye on the the heat that's kind of getting hot back there? Eat this note, like <laughs> yeah, appropriately, like. It's like, uh, I'm not sure what's going on. How, how you doing? It's like, I can hold my breath for hours. <laughs> yeah, just like trying to make small talk as a weird alien. Like Deputy and I were thinking like he's part of the, first we were thinking some horrible accident made him a burning skeleton. But we're thinking maybe he's part of some weird officer exchange program. So it's like, here's your burning skeleton man. And then you see like on the burning skeleton man ship. Um, there's a like normal human Navy guy in a suit and a bunch of burning skeletons surrounding him laughing like, ah, ha, ha, you have to breathe combustible gas. 
He's just sitting in there, terrified, trying to sleep in a spacesuit. As they're all mocking him, they're like, Ha ha, oxygen is for losers! Our ship is 9,000 degrees! Just, yeah, I, I've got some stupid ideas. I think it'll be a great time. We have a, we have a solo group there. I haven't played with Jake and CJ in a while. All right. Yeah, no, it's it's going to be good. It, it's Traveler because we got the CJ's playing the Aslan cat guy. And those guys are cool uh, because they're just like giant lines that like rip and tear. So they're like Doom guy for the most part. And then you've got uh, oh, this guy's getting a torp. Yes, you are. You're getting a torpedo. Yes, you are. Oh, please write in it. No, he's giving me one back. That's cheating. All right. So we have a problem. He, he, he countered my torpedoing with torpedoes, which I know. Okay, but I torpedoed him again, so now it's torpedo tag. Alright, he's going down, so suck that, battleship fleet, and engines absolutely almost totally destroyed on these things. So I'm going to put them all stop and be at the mercy of these a-holes. Would you say it was destroyed? <laughs> it is no matter for one of my skill. Um, but so what basically we have is we have the, the cat guy who's the the, the muscle. Uh, he's the he's the murder guy, so he's gonna be our like Mr. T, but actually smart, and he's got all the military training, so he's he's actually dangerous. Then we've got you, which are like a fucking multiple PhD super doctor. You've got... Uh, slight schizo. Yeah, yep. slight schizo, <laughs> but it's space. Space madness is... Eh. Meh. Eh. Yeah. It kicks in, it kicks out. It's a little space madness. Psyduck made that awesome guy. Uh, Mike made the guy who is a grave robber. Mike's guy is a grave robber. Um, we've got... I mean, shit. This is a weird crew, now that I think about it. We ha Jake was a hacker, but he said he reroll. I haven't seen his new thing. And I told him not to, because my dude's only really good at, like, straight electronics, so I can't really remote ops. Um, so that, so there's, like, there's still, like, four parts of, ele like, electrical that I can't, or I could can do two of them really well, and two of the others I can't. I'm, but I'm, he, he's like, we need to cover all bases. And I'm like, the last thing we need is a perfectly optimized crew. But if you play what you need. Yeah, I've I've got a guy that's like just a general spaceman. Like my guy can do anything a spaceman needs to do. Okay. That's that's my character. My character is adequate in many things related to spacecraft operation and engineering. And that's it. So he's just going to be like the handyman on board. He will be like, I have repaired the oxygen, which you need to live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How many teeth do you need? They're like, what, what? Uh, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I too enjoy humor. You will sleep well tonight. It's like, wait, what? No worries. Um, but yeah, just <laughs> space graves probably has a shift ton of awesome space loot. Probably shit ton of Dude, awesome if rare aliens. I in there. It, the moment we find an old alien civilization, ten seconds after that, we are going to be tearing open graves. Absolutely, hands down. So I'm conditioned. Every time I hear graves, I think graves your character, and I'm just like, wait, what do you mean space graves? Oh, you mean actual graves? No. Uh, uh, my, the character's name was Benedict Bainbridge Groves, which I know, are, but I, for some reason it's been locked as graves in my head. Well, we did kill a lot of people. You kill a lot. You kill, kill a lot of people with a very low gun score. Yeah, I just showed up at the right moment. It was like clap, clap. Um, but no, uh, Benedict World Bainbridge kid. Groves, named after the uh, well Manhattan peoples. All the Manhattan. I mean, the difference between grave robbery and archaeology is timing, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> wait, waiting till people wait, say it's wait okay. Wait one second, I not. need to, uh, there, now Mike's a moderator. Yeah, there what, we go. I was wondering about that. Yeah, no, I forgot. I'm dumb. I'm really nah. dumb. Mike needs to moderate. For the greater good. No. 
No greater good. I don't believe in any of that Tau crap. Tau crap believes in you. Yeah, I'm, that's the problem. I want not to be considered. That is not my objective. I mean, I appreciate people's af affection. I mean, I, it's nice when people... Because I... Here's the thing, is I don't want to sound like a weirdo more than I am. So I guess I have to frame it correctly. But there was... People send me pictures all the time, right? People just send me pictures like, here's... Yeah, they'll, no, they'll just say like, hey, here's me and my dog. Or, hey, here's me and the family having Thanksgiving. Or, hey, here's me and my car that I'm working on. And I like those. I, I like those a lot. That's very wholesome. And I like to see people out there who are just, you know, going on about their day and sharing me a little brightness. That's nice. Some people yeah. send some weird stuff. Um, and that's concerning. But, you know, I mean, it's it's coming from a good place. And that's fine. But, you know, it's, I, I don't know. It's it's kind of weird doing this public thing because I'm not the people person that people assume I am. But I I try to tell them that like, yeah no, <laughs> I'm I'm not a great people talk talk. I try. Um, you're a great lecturer and educator because you understand what you need to say to get people to understand what you're trying to portray. But that doesn't. I mean, it, and that comes with a natural charisma because it it comes almost you know, seamless to you. But at the same time, it's like, as somebody who's known you for a while and met you, you're a very reserved person. I mean, you you open up to people you trust and everything, but as, like, you're awkward as shit. <laughs> I know. And, like, I think that's with a lot of the smart people. and The smart people. Because like, well, I'm not a smart person. You're but with a lot engineer. of the smart people. You at least know that there, there is different. There is nothing on an engineer's, like, degree that says anything about being smart. It's well, knowing how to pass, get a grade. Well, that's fair. But, I mean, you, I don't know. Yeah, I... But, yeah. like, I'm just saying, like, as someone who... I find myself decently good at conversational with anybody, even though if I'm a little direct at times. But I can't portray or paint a picture... Or get information out as efficiently and as comfortable as you do. So, like I said, it comes off like a natural like charisma because you're well-spoken. And when you know what you're talking about, you're very clear and precise. When a lot of people would um and is and bumble around or, you know, rehash here and there. So I think it just becomes like with all the years of voiceover, all the text talks, like recording a book, I think it just comes with the idea that you know how to speak at people it's, and in a good way. Well, it's it's one of those things where I'm I'm a very quiet person and I'm very private. And and a lot of people are like, Tex, what's your favorite blah? And immediately the hackles go up and I'm like, This person wants something. Where's desk gun? Ah <laughs> uh, yes. Now I will answer your questions. You know what I mean? So safety's on, yeah. don't worry. But uh, one of those things is that I I appreciate a lot of the things in the community. Like whenever we go to bat for charity, uh, oh, yeah. it's it's like 10 out of 10. Like people are like, hey, this is fun. Or whenever we do a meme, like uh, let's get Albania to send us MiGs or Chengdu F7s because they, nobody else needs them. Everyone else who has an Air Force has an Air Force. We don't have an Air Force. I we think to be fair, they should let us have a crack at it. You know, just to be fair, if Albania wants to show the world they're fair, they'll let us have a, a MiG or two. Worst and, that could happen is they take them away from us and maybe they give us some money for them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if if all else happens and they're like, what are these for? I'm like, I just want them. I mean, that's not illegal. It's only illegal when I fly them maybe but you know there's a lot of asterisks is, is there you can do anything in america if you have money you just need to do we, some we can fly in like the airspace that vans in right yeah well there's no rules yeah. there yeah how many mags what, do i have I'm under saying. the desk uh that's none of your business <laughs> <laughs> i we're gonna get a mig one day <laughs> yeah that's um yeah i i really like i really I really like the idea of us doing some weird stuff because there's so many fun ideas I've had. Like, I'd love to do, like, an album or a record of all the weird BPL music and weird little memes and then just put that oh, out yeah. there. And I was thinking maybe press, like, a hundred copies of it and then auction them like off. Like record or, like, wax cylinder? 
a record. I mean, who has a wax <laughs> cylinder? Be like, ah, oh, yes. All you'll need to do is find an Edison Company wax cylinder phonograph, <laughs> easily available from your local hipster R Us with a USB C plug. -in. No, you you would have to wow. literally find a wax <laughs> cylinder phonograph. And if we made one, that would be the most autistic weird thing ever you get your wax cylinder you have your restored phonograph you pop it in there and then it's like <laughs> and you're like and you have to keep it above us or below a certain degree so it'll melt <laughs> yeah it's it's just like that, that it's gonna sound like compressed assholes it will sound bad well funny enough like there's this well it's no longer active but there was a podcast called hello internet with cpg gray and brady heron of like uh not, not yeah number file um and they actually recorded one of their podcasts on a special like you know record player but they also recorded like a three two or three minute wax cylinder episode that they auctioned off for charity oh that's cool I mean, I, I mean, obviously, you don't get a lot of time on a wax cylinder. No, and again, they sound bad. I mean, it. It. Remember when you were a kid and they had film strips in in class, you know, <laughs> and they would come in, and there would be the film strip, and it would just sit in front of a like light bulb, and they would say, "Okay, who wants to press the film strip?" And there's a button to advance the film strip. So, so one kid has to do that. So the teacher can go have a smoke break, right? So you're sitting there as the little AV kid. And you're like, ooh, I control the movie. And it'll be like, The Ancient World of Dinosaurs, copyright 1983. And this is the early 90s, so you know <laughs> that this is this is a bit out of date. And then the sound comes on. And because they've stored it nowhere near great, it just sounds horrible. Like, it's all discordant and out of tone. And then it'll be like, <laughs> And you're like... <laughs> You can't hear anything. It's jumping around. I, they were all, probably some of my favorite educational experiences. You knew you weren't going to learn shit that day when the teacher wheeled in the AV cart. You know, when the teacher yeah. wheeled in the AV cart, it was like, we're safe. We are fucking safe. We will do no homework today. The AV cart is out. The time is nigh. Um, the, I think, I don't I remember some of those and I from cinematography and stuff, but I think the most thing that blew my mind back then was Laserdisc, like the record-sized CD for high-definition video. Ah, <laughs> uh, my friend had Star Trek the motion picture on Laserdisc. Whoa. And I remember we went over and his dad's like, have you seen Laserdisc? And we were like, no, we have VHSs at my house. And he's like, oh, and he goes and gets white <laughs> gloves to bring out a Laserdisc and puts it in. And I'm like, yeah, that looks kind of nice. But TVs back then look like shit. So I was like, it's yeah, a I little. Mean, you can't really show it, really. <laughs> yeah. I mean, any of the benefits it had are just not realized in the technology. So he's like, so it's got the surround sound. And I, I was like, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of the Star Trek movies. I mean, and I was like, hey, you want to go to my house and play Command and Conquer Hot Seat until like four in the morning until my mom says we're weird? And my friend would go, yeah, and we'd go do that. That or we would uh, play down the block. God, I sound so old. Back in my day. Back in my day, we used to play on the dial-up. I'd put the computer into the wall, and it would scream through the internet. And it would go, do, 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 And then, you know, my friend down the street, his mom would hit pick up, and you'd hear it through the modem. So she'd be like, hello? Oh, it's doing the thing again. <laughs> and <laughs> then you'd hear him in the background like, mom, put the phone down. And then... We'd, we'd play, we'd play uh, Command and Conquer until like three in the morning. Oh, man. That, yeah, Command and Conquer. Oh, man. Mm. I, the nostalgia of that. Like, you can hear me go back to when I was eight, when I was playing Command and Conquer on that stream. I, I was just like, oh. it was so big, so big for my heart. I, I needed that. It's good to see a nice remaster that's just not shitty. Yeah, my I think my first sure my first serious PC game outside of like the ones you played on the computer at school uh 
was Command and Conquer or Red Alert. I can't remember which one it was, but it was I was still very much in my pre tens. And then after that, a couple years later, we got our own Windows three point one PC, and I used to play all the original Westwood games like Lands of Lore and Command and Conquer, and uh, you know, obviously Doom and all that. But it was just insane, just how blown away you were from stuff like Oregon Trail or the Yukon Trail. You're like, oh my god. I I remember uh, I remember Oregon Trail a lot. We used to play Oregon Trail. I was thinking about putting up a BPL competition for Oregon Trail, like uh, fastest Oregon Trail, any percent. <laughs> See, Every time it's like, would you want to stop and like, like let them rest? No, they could die. We gotta. We gotta I gotta die. beat the speed, any percent to Oregon. Honey, me, honey, please, Oregon will be there. No, it won't. Tear the tear the flesh off squirrels. Eat them. Any percent, no dysentery. <laughs> Any percent, no dysentery. I love it. I have a really, like, that was one of my, I had two really big come to realization moments when it's like learning what you should and shouldn't say in the world with my stepdad growing up. And the first one was we used to have a competition with Yukon Trail, which is essentially get to a gold mine area. And then when you get there, based on how quickly you get which mine you get to choose, and obviously when you get there quicker, you have more time to get the goal before the time runs out or every place gets taken. But I, uh, we used to like have a competition for the most amount of gold because that's how you measure your score. And one time I came home and I was looking at the backs of like the, the floppy disk that came with it, like it had a case. And on the back, it had like a picture, a screen capture of the end screen with a whole bunch of gold that I've never seen before and it showed you like which claim they picked so I never actually got lucky enough to get there nor early enough to get that claim but I came home from school one day and he did and I called him a cheater and he like like I got words that put me like shook me and put me in place <laughs> um you see like uh, and then oh the you want to one, cheat in a game I will give you trauma yeah, and that really worked because I realized, like, don't just, you know, just because you're losing, don't go to the first common. Like, they have, there's people that are always going to be better than you. So there's always not somebody everyone, who's just going to be fucking lucky. I mean, sometimes yeah, people and just. Luck is a lot of it. Yeah. I mean, all right. Did I ever tell you the story about how we fucked my friend's uh, or my friend's dad's um, Rainbow Six game? No. Okay. So here's a story time with text story. My friend's dad had Rainbow Six, the original OG Rainbow Six, and he was a total fucking psychopath about it. Like, he, he was one of those people that thought that, like, violent video games, even the really simple violence of Rainbow Six would, like, invariably corrupt young people. Um, and he, he really thought that, like, if there was violence on TV, he'd, like, turn the TV off. And even if it was, like, cartoon violence, the guy was interesting um especially with how his kids turned out uh because they, they they ended up being like this is dumb and living their own lives which is great um but so violence violence was bad but he could do it but no one else could so he he had some exactly. rules that were interesting but so he had to play um he had to play this game in the dark and he would let no one know he was playing it but my friend was like my dad's got this game and he won't let us play it and I was like it's dumb and we played it a little bit and we recognized a sound in that game from another game and we said wait that's a wave file and then we said mm -hmm. oh that means there's got to be a storage for those wave files so then oh, we find no. the wave files and we're like, what if we named a wave file the same wave file? And we did. And then we played the game and we, we could only play the game for like 15 minutes at a time for his dad would always find us on the computer. Like his dad would come in and look at that computer like every 20, 30 minutes while we were at his home. Like he was just nuts. Damn. So, so we had limited time to affect sabotage. So we started doing it little bit by little bit. So it would be like um, the si the sound for a silent pistol. We would just go like, tss, like that, and 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 just make that hiss sound. 
and <laughs> and and so he would be shooting and he's like my game's funny and da 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 and he kept like trying to you know install sound card drivers from floppies and everything oh, then he'd reinstall the whole game because he can't just you know manually check or you know check files so he'd do that and it'd be fine for a while so we would wait until he's like i'm looking forward to playing this game and then we'd go in and change it i don't know we would go in like there was an eagle uh, that was in the background of I want to say it was like the Sydney mission or something But there was like an eagle that was it was actually a hawk But it's it's the eagle sound they use in movies where it's you hear the eagle cry. Oh, yeah the, Yeah, yeah, uh, that, that, it was, yeah, it's yeah. a hawk that they always throw over the eagle because yeah, yeah. the eagle sounds like a baby. Yeah, so my friend just grabbed the microphone his dad had and was just like Ugh. So, you hear in this own mission in the background of an eagle, you hear distantly and echoing through this canyon. Uh. <laughs> so his dad kept reinstalling his shit and we kept laughing. And then eventually we made it too obvious. Like we made it too obvious where we did the machine gun and the machine gun noise was like, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> like it was really oh, bad. No. His dad was like, that sounds like kids voices. And we were no longer allowed to hang out in the house. Oh, so we had, that's great. we, yeah, we, we pulled a lot of really great pranks, uh, back in the day. And it, it was, it was pretty fun. Um, like, I remember one time for Halloween, we went as uh, U.S. Census workers. Um, so we had the, the white button-up shirts and the black ties, and we had the little bag, and we are asking people about the census, and we were like, so how many bags of candy have you put out this year? Okay, uh-huh. We had clipboards, and we are like, okay, and how many, how many bags of candy are you going to put out tonight? Okay, that's really interesting, because last year you gave out caramel apples. Susan, don't look away. I know you did it. I was here. Oh, my God. It was like an it was like an audit, you know. They they had to they had to answer for their 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 previous year's poor poor layout. Because when you're a chill, what you know, I mean, when you're children, when you're a child, certain things are sacrosanct, and one of those is the the fun of Halloween night. And and it it doesn't matter oh if it's like negative eight degrees, you will go face death with makeup frozen to your face to get that sugar for free. This is America. This is America. All right, looks like I might sink because I was very stupid. No, that couldn't be it. Oh no, this is this is absolutely my stupidity. Ah, uh, indeed, I appear to be filling with water. Uh, the flood is somewhat stabilizing, and I believe the sheer amount of water has put the fire out. So uh, that's a win. Do you think God made the ocean salty so we couldn't drink our way out of problems? You know, I think there's some wisdom in that. Yeah. Have you ever been so far as to want to do more like, though? Wow. I believe this ship is uh, a bit boned, considering the sheer amount of fire, which has evenly coated this thing, like some sort of fine uh, patina of misery. Oh, You're dear. Right. Look, don't worry about it. It's it's going to sink probably of its own accord shortly, maybe. I don't even know. <laughs> no, I think God made the ocean salty because it's dinosaur piss. <laughs> Good uh, shot, chat. Fucking dinosaurs. Got him. I wonder what dinosaur tastes like. I would totally try dinosaur. I wonder if, like, you know, they're trying to bring some back. Wait, this is a woolly mammoth. Yeah. They said that they're close to bringing the mammoth back. And I will pay top dollar for some mammoth because I want to try it. I I remember there was an oil company, I think, in, in Siberia that managed to find one. And they sought it up because... Russians do that. They're, you know, <laughs> they're just like... Yeah, it's like, we found a priceless animal. But what does it taste like? If aliens ever come down to fight us, Russians yeah. will probably save us. I'm I'm thinking, because they'll be the guys, that the aliens will be like, we can throw your satellites! And the Russians are like, ah, yes, I will use rock. You cannot Bonk. defeat analog. It's like, but Why? 
I can do now triple expansion steam engines, but I've been streaming for two hours, and I think I am just fine to uh, stop it for here. It was a good run. It was a good run. I managed to destroy most of their battleship fleet. However, they built a lot of cruisers, and they have a fuckload of torpedo boats. However, my ability to uh, project power is unmatched here. So, so far, Germany's winning, I would think. And the victory points agree with me. That's all that matters. Yeah, that's all that really matters. So I will see you guys later. Stay safe out there. Stay well. Uh, the podcast dropped a little late, but it was a pretty cool interview and discussion. And uh hope you guys enjoy. Stay safe. Stay well. Stay warm. And most of all, 